evening, and they want to speak to you and uh, and handle whatever questions you may have with them. You know that the judge positions are lower on the ballot, but we need to pay attention to those, and we need to make certain that when we go vote, that we go down the whole ballot. We've got three of those candidates out here this evening. The first I'm going to call up is Ms. Uh, uh, Catherine Sugar, and we're going to give them about 10 minutes each to present their platforms and, and handle whatever questions you may have. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Good evening. My name is Lee Catherine Shukart. A lot of y'all might recognize the last name, but not the first two names. My husband Fred has been a candidate on your ballot three times in the past, but this time it's my turn. And um, you got most of you, I think, got one of my push cards with a little bit of background information about me. And I promised to several of you that because of this special night, I know many of you want to get home, and I want to be so I want to be brief. But I do want to tell you, last Saturday I was at an event with uh, Judge Landrum, we were at a get out the vote event. And it was a small gathering, but an ardent gathering, a group that people that really, really cared. And it was in a, in a, being held in a church. And as I was talking to the people and I had my opportunity to speak, I said, this is not a time for cynicism. It's so easy to be angry and disgusted by the corruption and the failures that we see the court that I'm running for, the judge has not tried a jury trial since before COVID. You pay a million dollars a year for the operation of that court. And you can go look at her docket for the last years and years, and you'll see over and over again cases not reached, not reached, not reached, not reached. And you'll see cases that can date back to 2015, some even earlier. That's not fair. And that is not justice. The people in Harris County are entitled to have judges who do the job that they signed up to do. And so it's easy to get angry about things like that, and I have gotten frustrated. But on Saturday afternoon, as I was kind of reflecting back on being at the Get Out the Vote uh, event and wondering if we could really, come on y'all, this time can we really get out there? Can we really get our people motivated? And then all of a sudden my husband started yelling and said, Trump's been shot, Trump's been shot. And I was upstairs and I was like, I didn't even believe my ears and I'm running down the stairs. And there he rolled it back, the film back so I could see it. And it's like, I just witnessed a miracle. And we all did. And if that doesn't take the cynicism out of your hearts, and if it doesn't say, this is an opportunity for us to step up, do what we know is right to do, support our candidates, work hard, give, give our best every day, because we certainly see the person who's going to be at the top of our ticket is doing that in amazing ways. And as a judicial candidate, I'm not here to give an endorsement, but I can talk in a historical perspective about this is an inspired moment, and I hope that each one of you will look in your hearts and say, what can I do? My email address is on, on the, the back of my push card. If you have any questions for me, if you have any suggestions for me, I am more than happy to, to hear it from you. Just email me and I will promise you that I will get back to you. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you for being involved. And my name is Lee Catherine Shukart. I'm running for the 61st District Court. Okay. Thank you, uh, Ms. Shukart. Before, before you leave, does anyone have a question for me? I have a question. Sure. Yes. Are you running for the same court that Fred was? Uh, no, I'm not. Okay. No, it just, it, this is the, this particular court I, I chose because I knew the judge was not, wasn't doing the, okay. doing the job. And, and part of my reason for deciding to run this time was I just got so darn tired of writing reports on all of my cases and talking about venue and talking about the jurisdiction and the judges and saying over and over and over again that this judge is distinguished by the fact that they don't show up for work. We deserve better than that. Absolutely. And I'm in a position, was in a position, and am in a position where I could do something about it other than just kvetch. 
Thank you for being willing. My husband to taught me the Yiddish. So. <laughs> Do you have a, one more question. Do you have a list of the judges and the number of cases that they've tried over the period? It's very difficult to get that. It's not very transparent. But what I, what I did was kind of physically go back through her docket mm -hmm. and look through every week. The dockets come out on Monday for trials, and you can look after the fact and see that on the docket it will show that this case was not breached. And when every week you go back and it's like the first case isn't breached, and none of the other 50 cases that are on a weekly docket, a weekly trial docket, were getting breached. And so I kept looking back further and further and further and further, and just saw that there were like two trials last year that were non-jury trials, uh, you know, one day sort of events, but that there were no jury trials being conducted on, on her cases. And so that's, you know, it just it took a lot of time and a lot of really kind of ponderous stuff, but yeah, it's not very transparent. And I, Judge Landrum could probably tell you a little bit more about how they keep the numbers than I could. One more question? Okay. Thank um, you for running. Thank you. What's your background? Are you a lawyer? You said you're... Yes, ma'am. To, to run for a district judge position, you have to be an attorney. I was uh, licensed to the Texas Bar in 1986. Uh, I worked for about 15 years doing trial litigation, and then for another 15 years, I spent uh, my time doing litigation management for large health care companies and large health care insurance companies. So I got to be working with lawyers and going to courts in about 43 different states over the course of that 15 years. Most of the work I did was not in Texas during that time, so it was a real real eye-opener. Eye then my children all left, went off to school. My husband was left at home with me traveling all the time, and I decided maybe I need to take a third career. And so I started back trying cases again uh, uh, several years ago, and so that's that's been the third stage of my career. Thank you. Give for to my hand. Running for the 61st Civil District Court, and uh, please uh, consider her uh, as you look down that ballot uh, on, on election day. Next up, we're going to have uh, Judge Michael Landry come up. He is running for 133rd Civil District Court, and we want to hear from him. Okay. I don't vote in those judge races because I don't know anything about them. How many people know friends who say things like that? We need to fix that, folks, because if they knew why it's important to elect quality judges who will show up and do the job, we'd have a whole lot more Republican judges than we have today, folks. Because as Lee told you just a moment ago, we have a lot of them who don't do the first thing that they've got to do show up. I was a judge from 2013 until I got wiped out with all the other Republicans in 2018. And I will tell you that it was my frequent experience that I would be leaving to go for my lunch and meet one of my uh, Democrat colleagues coming in for the first time for the day. I will also tell you that there were a lot of times when they didn't show up at all. In fact, during the COVID thing, while I was there later, because one of them had to uh, resign because she had been indicted, uh, that's not a, that's, I'm not making that up. Governor Abbott appointed me to that vacancy. So I was there during COVID. I was trying cases. I was having jury trials during COVID. Everybody was wearing a mask and a face shield and all of that happy stuff. We went down to the NRG arena to do our jury selection. I was a lonely guy in the courthouse, folks. <laughs> we had a criminal district judge during that time who did not so much as come to the courthouse for two solid years. Ran a business on the side during that time, probably still does. The fact of the matter is they don't show up, they don't do the work because so many of them are not capable of doing, doing the work. The qualifications one must have to run for and serve as a district judge in the state of Texas, you must have a law license, 
and you must have had it for at least eight years. There's no requirement that you ever have stepped foot into a courtroom. And we have elected several judges whose first appearance in a courtroom was when they got sworn in. Now, why is that important? I'll make this as brief as I can because what I want to do is make an offer to you in just a moment. It's important because if you are the victim of crime, you want to know what the outcome is going to be if they attach the per perpetrator and indict the perpetrator. You want that perpetrator to be tried and if found guilty, punished. That's your right as a victim, just as it is the accused right to a fair and, under the Constitution, speedy trial. <laughs> That doesn't happen if the judge doesn't show up in a criminal case. How about if you or a loved one is going through a divorce? What do you think happens when the judge in a divorce case doesn't show up for work? People stay married when they don't want to stay married. They don't have a, a resolution to the question of who gets the house and who has visitation of the children and how are the children going to be treated. That is true suffering. The same thing happens in probate courts when probate judges don't show up for work. People have lost loved ones and their estates remain in flux. Now during all that time, all of the lawyers who represent those people have no choice but to bill them for the work that they are doing to try and get a resolution of their case. God help you if you should find yourself in a civil lawsuit because that's where the money's on the line, folks. Someone sues you because your dog bit them. Someone sues your business because they claim that uh, they were injured on your property or they, they, you owe them money or you are suing them because you claim they owe you money. Your business is being drained of its resources and your time and energy while the judge stays home. I met a person the other night who said that uh, he had a neighbor who was a judge, and doggone if that, that judge, his neighbor, didn't walk the dog every morning at 10 o'clock in the morning, and again at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> we can't tolerate that. Our courts are too important. Our judicial branch of government is the anchor of our democracy. It is there to make sure that questions get answered in a fair and equal way. That is why we have the jury system. Probably one of the most genius inventions of society, in my humble opinion, over the centuries. We must stand up for our courts. We must stand up and demand the best of our judges. Now my friend Brian is gonna to talk to you in just a moment. He has some materials for you because we all, your, your Republican judicial candidates, are trying to raise money so that we can have a joint judicial campaign. He'll ask you, and I'll ask you, and Lee would ask you, please chip in a few bucks to help us all out. 20 bucks, 50 bucks, 100? No donation is too large. So please, think about it. He has envelopes with stamps on them. Make it easy for you. So please do that. And then finally, here's the offer I'm, I'm going to make you. If you have friends and neighbors in your community who say, I don't vote in judge elections because I don't understand what it's all about, I don't know those people, I don't care, I have given my card out to many of you. I have more if you would like one. Reach out to me. Send me an email. Invite me to your community to talk to your neighbors, and I'll spend some quality time answering questions about the courts and our legal system and why it's important. I'll stand on your front porch until your neighbors are weary of me. <laughs> That's how we're gonna do this. I want each and every one of you to think of 10 people that you can call, email, nag through whatever <laughs> means to make sure they go vote. Make sure they go vote all of the races on the ballot and to make sure that each one of your 10 people have 10 other people that they will do the same for, and those 10 people will do the same for. I stole that idea from Steve Raddick, by the way. I'm not claiming a, a sponsorship. Please, folks, Harris County and Texas, 
needs you and your votes for better judges. Thank you. So this side of the room, you guys be quiet over here. This side of the room over here, say, repeat after me, Republican top to bottom. Okay, over here. Republican top to bottom. Back over here. Republican top to bottom. Republican top to bottom. Yeah. So now you need to get your neighbors to repeat the same thing, right? The ballot is really long. They're not going to remember all the names. I've already forgotten the court that Lee's running for. We can't remember it all. So what can you remember? Republican top to bottom. I think this guy wins over here, these guys. So, all right, back to you, George. Okay. All right, next up, we have uh, Brad Staley. He's, yo, <laughs> thank you. He is going to, he's running for, he's a candidate for uh, the 333rd District Court, and he's up to talk to you about his platform and his experience. Hi, good evening. Thanks for coming out. This is a large group. Oh, but uh, large or small, I'm always happy to talk. Uh, first of all, I just want to reiterate what I guess you've been taken to be the theme tonight. Uh, the courts in Harris County are not working. They don't function. And that's one of the three branches of government. And so a lot of attention is paid to the executive branch and the legislative branch, the legislators and all those races, and of course the federal. But I cannot overemphasize it is extremely important that our courts function in Harris County. The court I'm running for has the second highest backlog of civil courts in Harris County. Back in March, they had 3,600 cases backlog. I was just at an event last night in Montrose and had an attorney come up to me and he wanted to talk about how you know I was planning to speed things up and handle the docket because he and his firm have been waiting five years to go to trial on one of their cases. Now, somebody hurts you, somebody takes some of your money or owes you money, how would you like to wait five years, still be waiting for a resolution of that in court? It's outrageous. The court I'm running for, the 333rd, I, was, I ran two years ago and came close, you know, even with all the uh, election shenanigans the Democrats were pulling two years ago. And I was gonna wait out and run in two years but I couldn't stand it. I don't know if you're like me, but I cannot stand to go into the ballot box and not have a Republican to vote for. Yeah. Doesn't that drive you crazy? Yeah. And, and so when I was talking to uh, some of my Republican friends and the court I'm running for, the judge was so bad, the Democrats recruited a candidate to run against her and she lost in the primary. So how hard do you think she's been working since March to clear out her docket. I mean, it's, I told my wife, when I'm elected in January, I'm just gonna disappear for a year. You're not gonna see me. I'm just gonna be down there working all the time, morning, noon, and night. Uh, we've gotta get this backlog taken care of. Now, unfortunately, and it's typical for the Democrats, the candidate they chose and who won in the primary is unqualified. This is a civil bench that I'm running for, general civil cases, and the person that I'm running against is a family attorney that even practice in the civil courts. Ran for family judge on the Democratic primary a few years ago, didn't do any, uh, didn't get anywhere. Uh, I have no idea of what he's gonna do in the court, he's, he's got a steep learning curve. He doesn't, he doesn't practice civil law. But I don't think the Democrats really care very much about the quality of their judiciary. But they think they're gonna win. My opponent, who I understand has not attempted to raise any money, raised $75,000 in the last six months. These big personal injury law firms are just writing them checks because they think they're gonna win. They think they're gonna win without having to do any work. It's just gonna fall into their lap. And I'm gonna to work to try to make sure that doesn't happen and I need your help. And one of the ways you can help is of course is your time, but also another way is a little money. And I've got some forms here for the joint judicial campaign. You don't have to give it to me directly. This is going to come help all the judicial candidates, the entire slate. I've got envelopes. They're already stamped. The Republican Party in Harris County has paid for your postage. And I've got some forms here. If you can give anything, any amount, it will help us run some ads, uh, send out some texts, contact some people. And uh, they've got some strategies that I think will work. And we'd appreciate your help. 
Uh, so okay. that's my part. You know, uh, I can answer questions or. Well, good. Give, give him a hand. Give him a hand. Uh, I do. Yeah, I've got uh, oh, for the joint judicial campaign. Yeah, it's on the form here. In fact, we have a, uh, a little QR code, okay. so I can give this to you, and we can go online. And uh, your folks are on the distribution list. You should have gotten all this already as well. Okay. If not, let us know. Any other questions for uh, Brian? All right. Thank you all for your support and all your hard work and spread the word. Thank you. I've got one, Michael, you guys may be doing this already, right? One of the things that we're thinking of doing for social media, at least out here, uh, what we find is if you can post a nonpartisan, um, you know, post, say next door, and you can say, you know, it's been five years since this person has had their case not been even looked at. The docket's behind 3,600 cases, whatever. You can see how the community, the neighborhood, starts to comment on that kind of stuff, and then we can see where the... the the, the world views are, right, and then kind of pull them in this way. So what, what we need, right, I know I asked Dan this from Sarah, is we need those those bullet points. We need those talking points. So if you guys can find a way in, in your different courts, you know, in, in the relevant content that helps us engage the community and see how bad the courts are would be wonderful. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough deal. There is raw data, but it's not reliable data because because the judges are in charge of what gets put into the database. So a judge may show up and spend some time in a hearing and tell the clerk to put that down as a trial. And that's misleading. It's been going on for a long time. But I think we can find the size of the backlog in all of the courts and you know maybe get some historical uh, you know, basis for that. But yeah, the average age of cases in a court, we probably can deduce that. But we, we can't get we can't drill too much deeper than that. Yeah, I am not sure this is related to the courts or not. Maybe you and Dan can comment on it, but the the arrests or the police, the cases, the, the child cases where they just you know throw them out, is that was that related to the backlog of the cases? I mean police are arresting people but they're they're not getting charged or can you explain that? I really can't. Let's let Dan okay. talk. Okay. Okay. All right. 